morning pre-calculus. Uh, we are starting chapter seven. Chapter seven, analytic geometry. We're going to get more into um, the trigonometric functions, the algebra of it. Chapter six was more um, trig functions um, of angles. So now it's more the algebra with the trig functions. So section 7.1, trigonometric identities. We're going to look at some of the identities. You've already seen many of these before. Um, and we're going to start kind of transforming them. More on that in a moment. But what are trig identities by definition? So I've defined it here for you. Trigonometric identities are equalities that involve trigonometric functions and are true for every value of the occurring variables where both sides of the equality are defined. Okay. Pause this if you want to uh, need time to copy that into your notes. Now when we say solving for um, a trig identity or angle or theta or x or something, um, you really have infinite solutions. So let's look at the example of a sine curve. So this is just a parent function of the sine curve. Um, it's there in uh, pencil for y equals sine of theta, um, penciled in, we've, we're at 1, we haven't done any um, changes to this, we've got 2 pi for 1 period, 0 over 2 pi, so this is a sine function. And then we're going to be, um, in this example, say I'm asking, well, solve it, when, when do you get uh, 1 half? When do you get your y to be 1 half or your output to be 1 half? So what values of x give me a y of one half. Well, it's every pink dot there, and it goes on and on. There are infinitely many solutions where that um, sine curve is going to give us a y of one half. And when you look at that on the unit circle, um, that one half, that infinitely many times is, um, what's it type? There we go. Pi over six, five pi over six, would be these dots that we're seeing here. And then how do you get all the rest of them? We'll just keep multiplying those by 2 pi. And you'll get um, on and on and on forever all of those pink dots that would be your um, solutions for this when is sine theta equal to 1 half or when do you get that 1 half as that output there. Okay, I'll pause. Uh, you can pause this now if you need that. I'm going to move on to our example one. If you want to follow along in your book, this is on page 529. Oh, actually, before we do that, we need to know our trig identities. So, this is in your book, it is the blue box um, on page 528. 528. You need this blue box. Put a sticky note on your book page. Put a little tab if you have them. Um, print it off if you can um, or, and copy it in your notes. That copying is good practice to know, um, to familiarize yourself with these because you're going to have to recognize them and use them over and over. And the more familiar you are with them, the faster it is and the easier it is. So I've put up um, the first three sections of that blue box off of page 528 up here. So you've got your reciprocal identities, and these are really, you worked heavily with these in the last chapter. Sine of x is the same thing as 1 over cosecant. Cosine x is the same as 1 over secant. Tangent is sine over cosine. And then reciprocals, flipping flipping the numerator and the denominator. So it's each of these just the reciprocals. So cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cosine. Cotangent, yeah, it's 1 over tan, but don't stop there. Let's replace tan with what we know tangent is. And you know tangent is sine over cosine. Careful, tangent is in the denominator, so it's going to be flipped. Sine is now on bottom and cosine is on top. Okay, see those? Um, then we have our Pythagorean identities, and these come from the unit circle. Um, the most standard and common one, we'll use it in our next example, um, or our second example. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And then um, 
tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x, 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. Okay, our odd even identities, we mentioned this back in the last um, chapter. Be really careful, what do you notice is different? We talked about this, we drew it up on the board. Um, so the, the even odd identity, so notice we're taking the negative of x um, for our x, our input being a negative x, what do you notice about the outputs? Well, sine and tangent are both negative sine x, um, but cosine is positive. Okay, big difference. That was a quiz question in chapter six. Um, you don't have to put a plus there. I just really wanted to make sure that you don't put a negative or think that the negative was forgotten. Um, it's not really a plus. I just am showing you the difference there. So negative, negative, positive for those. Okay, again, in your book, page 528, mark it, know them, love them. It'll make your life easier for all of chapter seven. And really, this is used in calculus a lot. Knowing these are super helpful in calculus. And it gets a little frustrating when you don't remember one of them and you have to go find the table and then find which one it is in the table. The more familiar you are with these, the easier your life will be for this chapter, a little bit uh, more in this class later on, and in calculus. Okay, so now let's get to example one. We're going to be simplifying. So simplifying, um, I want you guys to think back to that lateral thinking example we had up on the board maybe a month or so ago when we said, what is lateral thinking? And we said, oh, we're going to take, we're going to think outside of the box literally. And if I'm solving this maze, I would say, oh, I did it. I solved it. I used my lateral thinking and I solved this in a more, um, maybe I tried a couple different things or I just thought outside of the box, okay? Um, so that's what we're kind of doing here. You have to kind of think creatively. Um, you might try and work something one way and that path that you start taking, you, you get to a certain point on that path where you realize, you know, uh-oh, I got to a point where I can't go any further. This doesn't look like this worked. Now I need to undo what I did, go back, and I'm going to try something else, okay? So we're going to be doing a lot of transforming. Um, think back to the um, transitive property of equality. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. I'll say it again. Transitive property of equality. If A equals B, and B equals C, then A equals C, okay? Transitive property of equality. So we're gonna do a little bit of like plugging and replacing and transforming things. So say you have a uh, cotangent, maybe I'll just replace it and write it with a one over tan. Um, and you know, you might have to break things apart, it'll be a little more complex than that, but you're really just replacing things. So let's give it a try. You've got your first example. You can follow along on page 529. We are simplifying a trigonometric expression. I abbreviated. Simplifying a trigonometric expression on page 529. So your example says cotan co sorry, cosine of t. And t, it's just x. Think of it as x. It's just a different variable. So cosine t plus tan t times, it's an invisible multiplication, sine t. Okay, and we're asked to simplify this. So, um, and in your first portion of your homework, it'll say start by trying to eliminate tangent or cotangent. So, sure, there's lots of things maybe I could replace. Oh, cosine t, well, I know cosine t could become 1 over secant. Um, but we're getting into some reciprocals that might not be helpful. Um, and your hint, your clue here is start with the tangents. Try and transform the tangents. So we've got tangent t times sine t. And we can replace tangent with uh, what we know tangent to be. Tangent is either sine x over cosine x. Um, and so there we go. I've rewritten that tan t, we've replaced it with what it's equivalent to, sine t over cosine t, okay? And now um, that we've replaced it, 
or substituted it in, um, we're just going to multiply out. That sine t is multiplied on, so that is multiplied in the numerator. So we have sine times sine. Sine times sine is going to give you a sine squared. Oh, also we need a common denominator. So common denominator, um, this, this one over here, it doesn't have anything in the denominator. This one has a cosine in the bottom. So we're going to multiply by um, our cosine over cosine to get um, that to have the same denominator of cosine. So we do that, multiply that first term by cosine over cosine. We're allowed to do because it's the equivalent of 1. And then when we do that, we're getting... There we go. So we multiply it on the first term. That creates cosine squared in the first uh, term. And then in the second, we've just simplified those two signs being multiplied together. Gives us that sine squared there. Okay? And then, now that we have the same denominators, let's cover that for a second. Now that we have the same denominators, those are like, um, they're common denominators, they're like fractions, so we can add them. So we just take those two numerators, cosine squared t and sine squared t, and we've written those. Now I've highlighted those here. This is um, a huge Pythagorean theorem identity right here. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So we just get to replace that whole numerator with the number 1. That's what it's equal to. So we're going to replace that with the number 1. We still have cosine t in the bottom. Now 1 over cosine t we see right up there secant of, I should have put the poster on my left side. <laughs> All right, secant of um, 1 over cosine can re be replaced with secant. Um, and that's your final answer. We've gotten rid of as many trig things as we can. We've um, eliminated the denominator. Um, we're done. We would leave it as secant t. Um, so I challenge you, you know, maybe you get to this point, 1 over cosine t. Oh, that looks great. I only have one um, thing there. It just happens to be in the de denominator. It's tempting to stop there, um, but you're not done. Try and get everything as simplified as you most possibly can, and, and that means not having a denominator if you can help it, okay? All right, I'm going to flip to the next example, so you can pause here if you do need to uh, copy that down. So our second example we're going to do also on page 529 out of your book. Copy that down. If you need, we're going to simplify sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta over 1 plus sine theta. Now, in a real example, this would probably be given to you as um, tangent as your first term. You can see that very clearly the first one is equal to, first term is equal to tangent. Uh, we're not going to change it to tangent. Now, the reason I'm not going to jump to changing that to tangent, and that would be like starting down the wrong path. You just back up and start over. Um, we're going to, you'll soon find out that you can't go any farther, and we really need um, common denominators is what we need. So don't jump to replacing that with tangent. Uh, we're going to try and get common denominators for both of these. And then this is back to you know Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. How do you find a common denominator? Well, I can multiply the first term by the other one's denominator over that denominator, and I'll multiply this second one by the first one's denominator over their denominator, meaning like that. So I just took the denominator over itself and multiplied it onto the other term. And now these are multiplying two fractions. You multiply across the top, multiply straight across the bottom. Two fractions being multiplied straight across the top, straight across the bottom. We're going to get common denominators, and we'll have to take a look at our numerator. So we've got one sine, so sine theta times one, so one sine there. And then sine times sine giving us sine squared. Over here we had a cosine times cosine, so that gives us the cosine here. Now look carefully, I underlined it in pink. We just saw this. What is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? That's our Pythagorean identity um, from the circle that is equal to 1. So we get to replace that whole 
um, it's underlined in pink here, get to replace that with the number one. Wonderful, simplifying it so much. Once we simplify that to one, that line in pink became a one here. What do we see now? Well, because that's multiplied, cosine is multiplied onto those parentheses, those are two terms in the bottom, I have a common, um, I have a pair, one in the top, one in the bottom. So those are going to be crossed out to be the number one. You replace them with a one in the top and a one in the bottom. Um, so one plus sine theta over one plus sine theta are the same things. They can be eliminated. Be careful. If there was a plus sign after cosine, you wouldn't be able to do this. But because cosine is multiplied on, we can take this term and uh, same term over same term and replace it with a number one. And you've got the one, you've still got the cosine hanging out there in the bottom. And then one over cosine, uh, we're just going back to our most basic um, trig identity and replacing that one over cosine right there with the secant. And that is our answer. Okay, um, I'll pause here if you do need to copy that into your notes still. I promise this will be helpful. And just be really careful with um, transforming. You might think that you're getting stuck. You might hit a roadblock and you might need to either think differently, think outside the box, or like start over, um, either one or both. So um, keep going, work hard. And now I am gonna give you a hint on homework question 12. So if you don't want the hint, if you want the challenge, you can just quit the video right now and you can always come back and see this hint later after you try it. But if you want a homework hint on question 12, um, they give you cosine cubed x, which we have not talked about today. Just think of it, that's really just cosine squared times cosine to the one, um, right? You can just expand that out. So cosine cubed, same thing, cosine squared times cosine one. All right, so that's your hint on question 12. Um, your homework will be posted into the lesson plan. Uh, good luck in your lateral thinking and using your trig functions and identities today. See you tomorrow.